but uh, yeah, I wanted to jump on, say hello, because it's a new month. Yay! And um, the scaffolding is finally coming down uh, outside my apartment. It's been up since April, I think, or May. I don't know. <sighs> and there's a, there's a guy actually right now here. I'll show you. Let me flip the camera. How cool is that? Huh? Finally. And it's like, as I just put out, I just put out a photo on Twitter. It's like cleaning a smudge off your camera lens with regards to the view when you want to look out into the trees. Hello, Karen. Hello, Bayshore. Yes, it's a very nice surprise. And uh, morning. Good morning. Joe san. <laughs> so uh, he's clipping, clipping the nets finally. <laughs> it feels like a year. And I was wondering when are they going to, when are they going to do it? Because for weeks on end, I haven't seen anybody do anything in the apartment. And then only last week, they laid they laid some thick pipe just outside and then that was it. Otherwise, some of the corridors are still not even painted, but then that doesn't justify all of this out here. So uh, just in case he's a bit self-conscious, I'll poke the camera out when he gets some distance from us. Otherwise, we can talk about Squid Game for a bit. And I got an iPad mini and I'm happy to discuss, wow, the white balance is terrible on this phone. We can talk about Squid Game and yeah, the iPad mini, which, which I have right here. As you can see, this is the old one. This is the size of the old one. Okay. But the new one um, fits right inside it, which you can see, you can see the screen, the screen's actually bigger than the uh, than the screen on the uh, the other one so I'll show you what is this squid game it's a Korean drama you can see here see how much bigger it is on top and bottom and yet it's still shorter at the same time yeah the um, squid game itself let me just squid game is a Korean drama about a series of games think of it as like battle royale and people have to people have to finish the games except if they fail they die and they don't know this walking in right and then you get a selection of characters with their own motivations and stuff as to why they're in the game and uh you just have at it and watch the drama and the insanity unfold that's the short that's a short way of describing it So soon, maybe maybe tomorrow, if I'm lucky, the scaff they'll take the scaffolding down. But at the moment, it's, it's, it makes a big difference to have a nice clear sky. It really does. These are my panels, which I've just put here for the time being, just to keep this battery charging on the down low through the netting, like one or two percent every day. And uh, soon. I can put him back down on my roof there, right? But now our, my apartment is this lovely sort of strawberry cheesecake flavor. And then probably next year, it'll be that apartment block over there. The other ones are done. There's actually four, there's four apartments in this style and ours was a third, which seems to have taken longer. Right. Uh, another size comparison. How's the garden? The garden, there's an episode coming out in two days with regards to the garden. And then the next episode will be the last episode about the garden. And then everything's coming downstairs because my friends are leaving the, uh, the place, their, their, their apartment, sorry. Let me just put this over here. And you'll have noticed a ton of videos on the YouTube channel. Uh, I'm really trying to catch up and get my watch time back up as well because it dipped because I didn't put anything out really since the uh, since the beginning of September. So I'm just putting up anything that I can I can get out that I think is worth uh, worth people's time. Yeah. So this mini, I don't really want to do a full video 
about it in a sense, you know, something that's edited and considered because I find that whether it's a, a live stream at the moment or it's an edited video, the views don't change. So I might as well just talk about it in a sort of unscripted way. And then people can ask direct questions about it as well if they're so interested. The, the touch ID, by the way, doesn't work. <laughs> no, it does. It's done it. But I have a habit of, let's say it's, let's say it's off now. If I press it, it's on, but it doesn't, it would have been nice if you could press it and it activates because it records it. Instead, you've got to rest it gently. And it works, but if you push down, then you turn it off by accident. But my problem at the moment is that because of the coronavirus and the excessive hand washing, my fingers, my fingertips are coming apart. So I can't actually use Touch ID with this finger. It's that badly butchered. There's just no fingerprints. Or if, there does, if it does record one, it will change again. So this finger I can't use. So I have to switch to my left finger and I'm not left-handed. So you have to reach over. It does work, but I have to reach over and do it, which is fine if I'm holding it this way. But if I do it this way, I'm screwed until I can get this finger uh, operating. And you would say, well, why don't you use this finger or this one or this one? But every single fingertip is out of action on this hand. I'm boned. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, for comparison's sake, this is an iPhone 12 Pro Max. Yeah, and uh, that's it in landscape, just for comparison. But the best comparison is actually with the iPad Pro. I'm thinking of selling the, the other iPad mini or just use it for school. I, I just, it's the, it's the mess around one with the kids. Um, but yeah, this is the, the 12 Pro. Hello, Brian. 12 Pro next to the iPad mini. Now, what I've done is I've restored, be careful here, I've restored the, um, the iPad mini from the Pro. So effectively, I've, I've duplicated this onto this because I want it to serve as a backup because this one, this one's battery is uh, dying and I need to get it replaced. Um, and then on the back, if I just do it gently, so it's not metal on metal, uh, the backs are basically the same. It's like having an iPad mini pro at the moment, but don't forget this is three years old. This is faster than this, which is kind of wild really. That's what we got in three years. The processor in this is two generations ahead of this one. Single camera, I don't care about the camera. I, don't, I never use the, the uh, iPad camera anyway. It'd be nice if Apple made a device like an iPhone or an iPad without a camera, and then you get the corresponding discount, but we know they won't do that. Um, at the moment also, a lot of people are complaining about the quality of the screen, and they're saying that the, uh, the refresh rate is really, is really uh, janky. But Apple says there's no, prob there's no problem with it, and I can't say I've noticed uh, well, I'm going to give you the Hong Kong price, Brad, but I think it's 500 US, I think. I'm not sure, but it's 4,000 Hong Kong dollars here. But I haven't got any screen issues, and on Reddit, they were discussing it to such a degree you would believe that there was a, a massive problem with this device because people were sharing stories of how they went into the store, they looked at demo models, they could see this weird jelly scroll effect, and then, and then, okay... And then the person had bought one, then they returned it, and the one they returned it for was also janky as well. And this one, no problems. And in my demo store, in the demo store that I went to, there was none there. What was that question? 120 on the refresh? No, it's 60 hertz on here. You don't get the nice uh, screen. I know you want the screen, Bayshore, but considering this is 120 hertz, I don't notice going from this to this and this only has the 60 hertz. And I know you listen to the podcast where Adam Adam wants the extra extra screen. 
refresh rate. I only ever noticed it when I got actually got my hands on an iPhone 13 Pro Max. I was using it and I thought, oh, now I can see the 120 hertz. Then I went back to this and I realized, oh, okay, it does make a difference. But that's an argument to say that the phone is really good and Adam needs, and maybe you do because you keep agreeing with him, you need to get your hands on one and then realize, holy shit, this is, this is a step up from the 12. And while it might seem like an S phone, it, it really isn't because it's heavier, better battery. Screen, screen quality is, is beautiful. For example, I put this on full brightness. I'm talking about a fucking phone and I haven't got it when I want to talk about this one. <laughs> but I had this on full screen brightness on a gray website. And then I put uh, DaringFireball.net and then I went to I went to the iPhone screen on I went to the website on the iPhone 13 and it was so much brighter that the extra nits really matter. This feels dark compared. Seriously, just holding it, using it makes a big difference and I think you change your mind. But with regards to some girly men on the internet when they complain about the price, sorry, they complain about the weight, Honestly, there's no difference in weight if you had one of these already and then you go to the pro version of it. Um, there was another question about the mini. Uh, don't get the Amazon tablet. Uh, the, yeah, there's a big price drop, Dave, on the, on the other old mini, which I actually think is fine. Right, this is the previous version. I deliberately got this version uh, a couple of months ago to do some work on the train. And... and this, this really was a luxury purchase. I didn't need to upgrade. But what I wanted was an effortless transition going from the Apple Pencil 2 to using that instead of going from Apple Pencil 2 to Apple Pencil 1. So now I can sell my first gen Apple Pencil since they're not compatible on you know, uh, the new iPad mini and the iPad Pro and only on this. So it's kind of annoying having to use two pencils. Now you can transition. You can just connect it with one iPad use it and then switch to the other one how what kind of workflow i would need for that uh, i don't but it's nice to say you know what i don't need two pencils i'll take this with me with the apple pencil and when i get home i can just pick the pencil up and then continue to work on uh, this one which i do legitimately need to do i have bigger projects that i put on here and i want the extra screen real estate for the big laborious time-consuming podcasts whereas this one if I do Zora's podcast, Loose Rants, the Zero Waste podcast, the interview podcast where you've only got one or two tracks, this is perfect for me, okay? You should have done an unboxing on YouTube. Well, I also said I wouldn't buy Apple gear directly from Apple. So this is actually secondhand already. I got this at a... One guy stiffed me, so I could have got it at a 5% discount already. This other guy uh, it was a little bit more expensive, but it was still 2.5% uh, cheaper than buying it from Apple. But the point is, I don't want to buy from Apple directly. I will buy secondhand stuff. And the best time to buy secondhand is from the people who make mistakes when buying electronic gear. And enjoying your shorts on your podcast. Thank you, KV. At least I know someone's watching it. <laughs> Timestamps aren't enough. You can make the big one. It's two hours long. Timestamps aren't enough because who wants to sift through that? So that's why I'm doing ex excerpts. Sense is the new mini wear. Yes, it does follow you. Um, it's not about sales. It's about me still needing to use Apple gear, but I don't want to pay Apple the money because of certain things that they're trying to uh, do. So I don't, I don't want to support them, but I still need to use their gear because I can't move off Apple. So that's the point I'm trying to make. But the best time, obviously, people now could get a discounted iPhone 12, for example. But who knows the state of the battery? So you might need to get it replaced. Some person could have, you know, charged it two or three times a day for a year. Well, that's nearly a thousand cycles. Whereas mine, I charge mine once, once every two days still. So the battery quality on this is much better. So your mileage may vary basically. And I say the best time to buy new gear now secondhand is because someone's bought it. The first guy who stiffed me said, oh, it's not the right size. And I'm thinking, how do you not, how do you not know the size of this thing? It's, a, it's an iPad mini. The second guy who came through, through for me wanted the GPS version, not GPS, uh, the 5G version for his workflow. Whereas, you know, hotspotting it from here, I've got 5G on this phone. It's fine, not a problem. So I don't need what he wants. 
So he, he he got it replaced for some reason. Can't remember what he said to me. So actually, this was unboxed on what day is it today? Today's Thursday. He got it on Tuesday. Okay. What this is iPad Mini is mini sized. I know. Who'd have thought? But it's it's so. I mean, look at this. Look at the difference. You wouldn't think there was that much of a difference. Okay. But when you hold these two, there really is a big difference in trying to get to your work on this and this one. I can't explain it. It's not, it's not any lighter, it's just more compact and just those couple of millimeters or three thirteenths of a fucking inch, whatever you use in America, really make a difference. Okay, and it's just, it's just nice to hold this and just use it. I watched Marvel's What If on this last night. It's okay if you're, if you're watching it here but I put it on my stand, it doesn't really work. That's that's what this one will be for eventually. I'll use this for Netflix, you know, writing, browsing, and then um, podcast editing. You sold me, I'm getting one. But try and find it secondhand from some schlepper who didn't understand what they were buying, okay? And so now they've got to buy another one. Metric system in Canada, yay for Canada. <laughs> it's okay, I'm only joking because well, you know me, but also in the UK, we, we still use both. We're legally allowed to use both at the same time. Okay, I'm getting one too. Look at that, I should get some commission. Um, Apple Pencil. A lot, of people, a lot of people online make a big deal about how, it, how it's moved the volume buttons. And I was watching a YouTuber called Something Something Dad, like the easy, ex easy to explain dad. Well, the everyday, there you go, everyday dad. And his motto is, if he can understand it, then so can you. And having watched so many videos, it is interesting to know how a lot of people belabor the point of tiny little things that, if you haven't got one, you think, oh my God, that's a really big deal. And he was talking about the volume buttons. Because they're on the top, obviously they're here. But if you use the iPad this way, then they go up. So they, they travel from down below to up top. And he was saying it's kind of awkward, but Apple is clever. The volume button is still on, it's still above the bottom one. The volume up button, sorry. It's still, where is it? <laughs> I lost it. I rotated it, I lost it. This is still volume up, even though you rotated it. And it's, it's here when you rotate it the other way. It's, it's orientated itself here with the accelerometer. So whichever side you have it on, you just, you just tap it on, on, the, on the uppermost one. I think that's great. But they were talking about how it's down here for this and it's down, it's up here for there. Well, I'm sure if you buy something like this, you will orientate it. You'll just, you know, just like, just as much as um, you just have, you just develop finger habits and you, and you just know just as much as some people, when they put their phone down, they always rest it screen side down just to look after the screen. It's just a habit that you develop. So other people might say, oh, in the dark, I, I don't know which way the phone is and then I can't remember. But some people just unconsciously organize themselves, put the phone down with the top facing away. They think about it. So when they pick it up, they know exactly you know, where to start from. They don't, oh, which way did I do it? Oh shit, it's upside down because it's a rectangle. We just, we got finger memory. That's what we do. Some of us do anyway. So if you are watching a lot of YouTube review videos, my advice is to is to just get one in your hand. That's the biggest That's the biggest differentiator between thinking, oh, this isn't for me, or thinking, yeah, this is for me. Other people say they don't like the speakers. Other people say they do like holding it. So when you listen, when you watch more than one, you begin to feel that, it, oh, this is a subjective take that they're all having. They're not really approaching it. Uh, some of them might appear like they are, but some of them might look like they're, they're approaching it from an objective point of view when they're not. I think I have normal sized hands. Touch ID is fine, it does look very thin, but it gets your fingerprint, even my janky fingerprints, which are suffering at the moment. Volume is fine, sound is fine, holding it is great. I do need a screen protector. I can't really say anything else. I, I just really like it, and this is the one I should have got when I really needed one, okay? So this is my interim one, but I'll take this to school now, and this will just, just be for kids, and uh, that one will be my sort of workhorse for the less complicated podcasts. Yeah, so I've got my workflow is what I'm saying. And I don't feel like it's a huge transition from, from any of these devices. I mean, I mean, we're looking at them now. Oh yeah. Um, 
and it's it's fine from going from one to the other. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, that's it. I mean, here's the so the pencil, as I was saying, pencil on the iPad Mini, pencil on the Pro. It's fine. If anything, because I went to the store. I would actually get the smaller one. The next time I buy one, second hand, off somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, it's a 12 Pro Max. I would buy the next one, uh, the 11 inch. I'd go down a size because this is actually too big for me. But it's still a lot bigger than, than this one as well. So Apple, I think Apple have thought about it really well. The other 11 inch looks small, but when you get this one, it is, it is just so much more compact. Yeah, uh, 12 Pro Max. And uh, this one, this one actually is the lowest end iPad. I've realized since moving my stuff off iCloud and I back everything up now and restore everything from backups, I think I wasted my money getting, this is a one terabyte version. I didn't need a one terabyte version. I could have just got a 128 gigabyte version. And uh, from now on, I will be happy enough to just buy the lower capacity ones. Even this, this has 256. I never use, I never use more than half of it. So again, why did I buy the big one? Are you getting, no, I'm not getting a new iPhone. Uh, I don't need to. If I, if I do, it's to replace the 10R that I'm using now deliberately, just so I can wave this around for comparisons. I'm not getting a Pro Max 13. It'd be nice though, just to have, it would just be nice. But I'm not, I know I'm not gonna do anything with it, Bayshore. Whereas with this, I am gonna do a lot of podcasting with this. My whole unit, I mean, the fact that I can put my microphone, connect it in with the uh, with the USB C, just pop it in there, and just go boom, 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 boom. I mean, <laughs> this is amazing. No, I don't agree with Apple. Uh, with Adam, sorry. The whole point was to say to Adam that he needs to chill his beans, so to speak. I'm not getting it because I don't want to spend. 8,000 or 9,000 Hong Kong dollars on such a device because for me, I don't think there's enough of a difference for me, but for other people, I can see how it, no, sorry, there is enough of a difference. I just don't want to spend $9,000, uh, whatever that is in US freedom dollars, I don't know, but I just don't want to spend that money. I want to save it. And uh, this is my purchase for this year. But if I had more money to throw away, then then yes, I would buy it because I think it's, it's good enough. But in saying that, if you've got a 12, there's an app called uh, Haldide, uh, H-A-L-I-D-E. -H I'll, I'll put it in the show notes when I do the video uh, editing for this. But you can, there's, there's a camera app. This is, this is what it looks like. And it's a manual camera with some automatic functions. They actually give you, with the latest software update, a macro mode. And it's software interpreted. Now, you could say, well, that, that sounds a bit shit, but this app has a reputation for being part of pro photographers' workflows, and I wanted to support them. So it was 30 British pounds when I bought it. Hey, Siri, what is 30 British pounds in US dollars? 30 British pounds is 40 US dollars and 76 cents. So I bought it to support them, but they just used a macro mode. And judging from the photos, it's just as good as the one in the iPhone 13. So there's one less reason for me to update to the 13 if I so wished, right? And it's put, it's done in software anyway. They're just adding it into the older cameras, which is something that Apple, I guess, could do, maybe? I don't know. But if the third party have done it, then why not Apple? Part of me agrees, though, with Apple, with Adam. I keep getting them mixed up. I keep confusing Adam for Apple and as though one's... A, they're both corporations worth a trillion dollars, but Adam is worth a trillion dollars in my heart. Hong Kong dollars, by the way. The other thing I wanted to say was the refresh rate. I am wondering why the screens on here can't do variable refresh. Is it just the hardware or could you do it on a software basis? Just go from 10 to 60. Like what is the difference? And I guess I'd have to do some homework and find out the technical reason for that. But if it is some extra hardware, then okay, fine. But if it's not, then do variable refresh from 10 to 60 hertz on the 12s. Why not? They talk about the power of these devices. And I think this has the processor of the new iPhone 13, by the way. So this 
is more powerful than this and the iPad Pro. But for all that power, what am I getting or what are any of us getting on a casual use basis? So I understand if the camera has extra functions because it is processor intensive. So in that app, you've got extra headroom or the camera isn't making the phone as hot because it can sort of relax a little bit because it's, because it's stronger, fine. But if you're just browsing, then what am I getting for, for the extra processors? Obviously I'm using the low power ones, but why can't it do other things in the background like variable refresh, say? Now, do you need the processor for that? Or do you need an actual assistive technology which is augmented by the, process, the newer processor? Or can it be done in software? That, that's, that's my point. Or oh, what are these comments from Brian, sorry? Uh, Adam's Apple, oh, don't get me started. Just like when they don't pack the product box with accessories like they used to. Uh, yeah, that's very true. You don't get plastic wrap now. You don't get plastic. Is pla is, if, if, I mean, if plastic is an accessory, and it's an important accessory, then yes. Um, but it's a bit of a con. If you think about it, I don't. I don't know if anybody knows this, but when they don't put, I mean, they gave me a charger. By the way, you get a charger with uh, the mini. It's plugged in right now. You do get you get, because they're seen as a computer, aren't they? But what they're trying to do is obviously move you to wireless. You might buy some third-party wireless thing, whatever, and. They're saying, oh, it saves all this carbon. Yeah, that's fine. That that's all well and good. But then you get this, you get the cable, okay, that's fine still. And everything's everything's moving over to over to USB. Heck, my power bank has USB ports on it now. But the problem with that is that if you have a wireless, if you're charging it wirelessly, it actually is energy inefficient. So that energy inefficiency is sort of negating the benefits of the smaller, simpler packaging with the carbon that you're saving. So you're taking from one and putting it on the other because they're going all in on wireless, probably a little too soon because of the, the heat provides, things the heat or the transfer process isn't efficient. So just keep the numbers simple because I can't do numbers very well. You're losing like 50% for every percentage point. So it takes twice as, takes twice as much energy to get it to 1%, to one extra percent than it does with the wired cable. Sorry, the cable. Read iPhone 13. The aperture is smaller. Yeah, the hardware, the apertures are smaller. Um, but does that necessarily allow the, the macro mode? Is it a hardware thing? Yeah. I mean, considering that there's hundreds of millions of us, I want to say a billion, but I can't. I can't. Think about everybody charging it wirelessly. It just takes more energy to charge your phones. I don't charge wirelessly, but I do have a mouse pad here that can do wireless charging, but, but I never use it for wireless, wireless charging. Um, yeah. Um, that's not wireless. That's not wireless. Just the Apple Watch, just the Apple Watch, I guess, is, is wireless, but it's so insignificant. Uh, it shouldn't really be a concern for most people. Any other questions? Apple is green for their own pockets. I mean, I don't want to be too cynical. I don't want to be too cynical. I understand that they are making, like, for example, all of their production, they're shifting to solar. I get that. And they are switching to what's called a closed loop manufacturing process. I actually read their sustainability reports every year for the Zero Waste podcast because I do want to give them the, the praise where it's due. So they are doing a lot of things, but then other things are justified in the sense that you don't believe that what they're doing is actually for the environment it's to it's to benefit them much like we had us dollars now five dollar headphones wired now at a minimum what they're 40 us dollars wireless but do they really cost that much extra compared okay you can say that the, the audio quality is better but how much of that actually is justified by the eight times increase in price if you're going from five US dollars to 40 US dollars. Just as an example, of course, you don't have to buy the Apple's ones. Um, you can buy some no-name no -name brand ones. Would you recommend people to get the 12 or the 13? Just get the best one that you can afford. That's what I would say. If, if, I mean, if, if cost is a factor, then get a, get a 12 second hand. 
But again, you don't know the battery quality and the battery is really important. That's what I was saying at the beginning of the, of the episode. Probably the same audio quality. Yeah, for sure. And I say that having bought the AirPods, but I want, I want the fast switching. So these features, these features are important for me. I want the fast switching. I need them. <laughs> I need them. Otherwise, you know, if you need to have a 13, I'm hearing a lot of good things about the mini. If you've got the patience to have a small phone, then I would get the mini. It's the least expensive. Or find, maybe you can find a 13 secondhand already on eBay or whatever you use to, to sell and trade uh, secondhand items. The fact, that, the fact that I got a mini secondhand already in mint condition because the guy got it on Tuesday. This is just for uh, Geraldo who's came in late. He got it Tuesday. I think he bought one on Sunday, got it replaced on Tuesday, met me yesterday. So this is my, this is my first new day using it. Brand new. And I got it on a discount. It's insignificant though it is, it's still a discount. I'm sure you could do that with the 13. So many people complaining already about the weight of the 13s, but people were complaining about the battery life. So what is it? Do you want a heavier phone with better battery life? Or do you want a really slick, thin phone and then you've got to keep charging it uh, multiple times a day if you're doing anything at all intensive on it. So you've got to, you've got to weigh those benefits, advantages, advantages, I guess. The 13 and the S21 camera were compared, ended in a tie, but 13 better than for video zoom. Yeah, the video stuff is really good. People, a lot of reviewers will say, well, the Samsung or the Pixel is better in this regard for picture quality, but when it comes to video, the iPhone is... Uh, is good for that but I mean how many of us I'm not even going to use ProRes anyway I don't I don't care about ProRes some people might but I don't care but the fact is any video that you're going to shoot is limited by the by this port which we can which we can bring up again in relation to the green initiatives if they were green then it would give us a USB-C because it's faster the transfer and it's compatible with so many other cables but they don't want to lose access to their MFI program where you have to get certified to use a product uh, to use the lightning port. But it takes, there was this pro photographer who's got the iPhone 13 and he said it took 90 minutes to take 200 gigabytes off his phone with the lightning port. It would go so much quickly, more quickly with USB-C on it. Um, and the downside is if you use Apple's transfer, if it, if it fucks up at any stage of the process, you lose all the files. So you've got to get a third party app to take them off one by one because lightning is just so slow. So a terabyte iPhone, you're asking for trouble if you're going to fill that with ProRes. And I might, I have to let you know that ProRes, if you shoot one minute of ProRes, it creates a six gigabyte file. <laughs> so two minutes is 12, so forth. Uh, yes, they are about to mandate USB-C, but other people think that Apple will get their wireless technology um, up to speed before they're mandated, and then they'll go portless. That's what they think. So they'll skip USB-C. And if it's just if it's just as fast as USB-C, I don't have a problem with that. I don't I don't care. Yeah. Right. But then that also means how are you going to charge the phone on a whim? I mean, okay, I've got one of these battery packs which has got all the all the you know cables attached to it, and then it's got the wireless transfer part which I never use because it's kind of annoying. I mean, if you're picking up your phone and using it, that's the disadvantage, isn't it? If you've got a cable, it's still charging between the two. Uh, Six when you think about apps taking space, also yeah. But I mean, if you've got a one terabyte phone, it's not a big deal. It's only a big deal when you want to transfer those gigabytes off the phone. That's why I try and keep my YouTube video short because I just hate the transfer. This is the bottleneck now in the workflow. I have an SSD for the MacBook Air. So I can use Final Cut Pro on, on an external drive. That's great. It takes seconds to transfer the gigabytes, but it really you can really feel it on the phone. Um, maybe I should use the cameras on these things for simple stuff then. In fact, you could with this one because it's so small and then transfer it with USB-C. Use iCloud. Uh, 
iCloud is just a stopgap, but I do use iCloud for uh, devices, in between devices, short things. So if I make a recording on this, it will go to the iCloud. So if I want, I can transfer it and put it onto this effortlessly. But otherwise, I actually use the five gigabyte tier. I'm not paying for iCloud. Again, it's just not giving money to, uh, to Apple. Yeah, because of the, uh, the child porn uh, scanning system that they're going to implement, they want to put it on, on our phones and I don't agree with that and they've only delayed the technology and it's it's does it but sorry let me let me just break it down first uh, first but before I break it down does everybody know about this technology this child porn scanning technology if not I'll give you a little refresher I would say tap tap for hearts but you can't on this on this thing hearts really do matter Big Brother again. Does everybody know or not know? Sends all your data to the Chinese. Well, they already do. If you've got, if you've got an iCloud account set up in China, then that kind, the people in that country have access to those accounts. No, you can't disable the scan unless you don't use iCloud. Google already does it, and Microsoft already does it, Amazon already does it. They scan uh, for something called hashes, and they look for pattern matches. So if, you're, if you've got child porn on your phone and you throw it onto the online drives, they can scan it and say, hang on, what's this? Apple haven't done it, but now they're going to implement it on iCloud, which I don't have a problem with because it's on their property. I'm putting photos on their property. Right, But what Apple also wants to do is they want to put the same technology inside your phone. So at any time of the day, the phone is just scanning your shit or your photos for child porn. Now, some people could say, yeah, I don't care. I don't care because I don't, I don't have uh, child porn. Whatever is on the FBI's list, it's a federal agency that they, they run these checks against. But if you, this, So it's that argument of, well, I've got nothing to hide, so it doesn't bother me. But how many of you wouldn't mind someone coming into your apartment just to check everything. Like you haven't got anything illegal, but they're allowed to come in and check every day. It's the same thing. It's just the principle of it. No, I don't want anybody coming in my room, in my apartment. There's nothing in here. Hello, Sky TV. Uh, wouldn't that increase the mobile data usage? Yeah, possibly, no, uh, it's on device. So they're doing it locally, and then they send that information out if they if they record anything. Danger of false positives. Uh, supposedly, sh posit false positives are astronomically in the trillions, but if there's millions of us using it, then there's going to be enough false positives. Does anyone actually think it won't expand to search for other things? Right, so it's a slippery slope argument, and some people are in denial and saying, no, 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 Apple, Apple won't do that. But Apple always follow the law in any country they're operating in. And they already deny apps to operate in certain contentious countries. If the, you don't even need to take them to court, the government actually tells Apple, we don't want this app. And I'm not naming names because there's more than just the one that you're probably thinking of, but they already do it. One I can safely name is Saudi Arabia. There's certain apps that do not work in Saudi Arabia because the, 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 the government said, don't do it. So Apple didn't do it. So are you telling me that Apple are going to introduce this technology and then they're going to refuse requests. They've only ever refused. Sorry, I'm scooping in because uh, I haven't got my glasses on. Hello, uh, Davo from, sorry, Sky TV from Davo de Audio na Butarion. I'm sorry, my Spanish or my uh, Philippine is terrible. And I'm assuming it's Spanish. Sorry. Or Spanish influence. But the FBI case where Apple said we can't unlock that phone which I believe them and they made a big deal about it and everyone thought, oh my God, they're really interested in privacy. But ever since then, what have they done? They won't encrypt. iMessages are not encrypt, encrypted on here. Just don't update the latest OS on the phone. Uh, they actually, it's already implemented on iOS 14. 
it's there, it's running in the background. Uh, sorry, it can run in the background. The, the code, that, the better description is to say the code is actually already on the phone. They can just turn it on. So you can't, you can't not update if you're thinking of avoiding it. <clears throat> but they haven't implemented it yet. I need to stress that in case you didn't catch it. They haven't done it yet, but it's their plan to implement it. So uh, that's why I don't use iCloud. Uh, I don't use the paid tiers anymore. They want to invade your privacy more and more. That's, that's what I believe Apple would do. Now they can say, no, we won't. But the patch out from, uh, oh, you saw Mary's uh, YouTube video. Okay, so for those that don't know, I collaborated with a, a YouTuber in, in Hong Kong and she taught me some words in Tagalog, which is a, which is a Philippine language. Uh, I'll find the video and I can put it in the show notes, but I speak to Gallo for a few seconds with Mary on her video and she shared it. And then some people from the Philippines are, are engaging uh, with us now, just like Sky TV Dog is doing. Yeah, so welcome. Uh, what was the word she said with that? Let me see if I can remember it <clears throat> to my Philippine friend who's in the chat. Uh, where is she? Uh, Kumasta? Kumasta? Is that, did I say it properly? Kumasta or Kumasta? Hey, Calbo. Calbo, she said, and then she said, Kumasta, which is, how are you? Mary is a good YouTuber. Oh, do, do you all know her? Already? <clears throat> do you remember the numbers? The numbers for what? What time is it? Okay, I've got to go before 10. Okay, Lang. I don't, I don't know what Lang means. Sorry. Everything she taught me, I already forgot. It didn't go from short-term memory into long-term memory. <laughs> oh, those numbers. No, I don't remember. Don't remember any of it. I have to watch it again, I guess. I have to watch her YouTube video so I can teach myself. But if you didn't see the video, uh, it's like a 40 minute conversation with my video and then we swap and then I do a video on her channel. How are the rooftop plants doing? Uh, they're fine. I killed the pumpkin. That video will come out tomorrow. And then uh, we have one more video on the roof and then I have to bring it all the way down. Kumasta, I'm okay, Lang. I'm... <laughs> Seriously, I'm out of my depth. I need to watch the video. Um, I think that's it. For topics, I wanted to jump on, say hello, talk about the mini. Uh, my PR, I've applied for it. I'm still waiting for it. I supposedly didn't send a piece of paper. So they come back and said, hey, we we um, we need this missing piece. Oh, uh, we met. I can't remember how we met. I can't remember. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Who cares how we met? It's how we live together that matters. All right, any other questions? Otherwise, I'm going to scoot. Good morning. I need to watch the video, sorry. I'm flailing around. Umaga, I remember Umaga. Magadang, Umaga. So many Gs in your language. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna, gonna go. 45 minutes is good enough, okay? Thank you very much for watching. Although, it'd be better if you watch me on the replay, then I get my watch time up. Not turn up live, okay? Let me speak to myself from now on, live, so I can flail around, and then you watch me on the replay. Don't do replays. And if they take the scaffolding down, I might do another video. Okay, see how quickly they do, it. they do it. Some of you saw how quickly they put it up so we can see how they pack it away. Okay, no worries, nice to see you. It's nice like this because with live, I don't know what you're watching of my videos, Brian, but you're here, you're saying hello. It's great, Dave, everybody else who name drops. Yeah, right. Ciao for now.